217, Radio BDC live from the Miller Lite broadcast tent. We are sponsored by Dunkin' Donuts and powered by CTP. I have Timothy Showalter from Strand of Oaks here good with to me. Good be here, man. How are you, man? Very good. You're in your element. This is, yeah. this is, I mean, this is your spot. This is where you shine. Well, I just feel like when it's outdoors, the sun is out, or if it's nighttime, whatever, I just feel like it's when we take off yeah. as a band. Yeah. And... Whether it's a club show or a festival, but it's just, you start seeing that connection happen. And it's yes. like a feedback loop. And they send it back, you give it back, and it just becomes this real joyous, joyous event. How was it today? Did you feel that vibe oh, from the crowd today? Good. We don't get back to Boston enough. We're four hours away in Philadelphia. I know, right? And it's like, it's a shame because I have so many friends here and a lot of deep roots in Boston just with playing shows and you know, two of my members are, you know, kind of Massachusetts main guys. Boston's their place. And just been too long. You know, it, it's such a great place to play music. This is too, I feel like too, and, and you can correct me if I'm off on this, but I feel like Boston was one of the cities that kind of early on kind of oh, yeah. got, got stranded. Oh, yeah. Books, it was and got what you were doing and was like, yeah. You'd come as a band bunches of years ago and there ain't any help or anything, but you show up and I'm like, people bought tickets. Yeah. Feels and then, good. You know, you play places like PA's Lounge or TT's. Yes. And, you know, and you're like, oh, man, there's people here. This is a good sign. And, you know, it's just it's been something that Boston's done for me for the past 10 years. And it's just a you know, it's an amazing it's an amazing city that understands that the guitar is still alive and people like rock music. People like to have a good time. I want to talk about that, too. And I want to get to some of your early gigs here in Boston. And I want to talk about rock and roll as well. Um, but but I also I want to talk about the new album. I mean, Hard Love came out a few months ago. And I know, you know, just from reading up, and, and anyone who's a fan knows too, that the, this was an album that you kind of like, you, you started to write and create, and then you kind of scrapped it, and you kind of started over. I, wa I want to ask you the, and I know you've talked tri a, a ton about that, but well, that's I want to. I'm here. <laughs> I want. I want to come at it from this perspective. Now that you've been able to get out on the road and to play the album as at, you know, in the form that it became, do you feel like you made the right choice? Now that yeah. you're, you're playing those songs live, you're getting the feedback. Do you feel like yes, this was the right choice? Yeah, I feel like there's two decisions decisions you can make. It's either, you know, focus inward, be kind of selfish, think about your own problems. Mm. That's what a lot of us do. I sure. do it sometimes. But then there's another decision of let's focus this outward, and we're all in this together. It's a community. It's like a, you know, it's a more extroverted feeling. And I wrote the songs with that idea, but then getting to play them yeah it's you can't recreate it when you're by yourself in a room no, strumming a guitar no. but then when you get to have that vibe of being outside or being in a show and these songs that you wrote in isolation and kind of daydreaming about oh how are people going to react and then you do it and you know you find out that radio stations are playing the songs uh -huh. people know the lyrics before you come to the city i mean that's just that's magic it has to be so satisfying it's magic yeah yeah you know i there's no, there's more, no more tangible reward than to see people smile when you start a song. I'll say this too: you do a wonderful job as a songwriter, Tim. Um, and I'll just use, I'll use Radio Kids off of this album, and I'll use Goshen '97 off of your last album. You do a wonderful job, just as examples, of writing autobiographical songs that people can relate to. And that's not easy to do, because a lot of times, if you're coming from the autobiographical perspective, it sometimes can get really deep and personal, which is good. But to be able to, those two songs in particular, the first time I heard them, I'm like, oh my God, I've had experiences just like this. Like, it really tapped into to my own personal experience. I've talked to people who've done the same. So I guess it's sort of a question and more of a statement. Just th thank you for that. Thank you for putting oh, parts of yourself out there that, that people can thank access and, and giving us a giving us a point to connect. Because like you said, it's all about coming together. And, and I really I feel connected when I hear so your songs well, and I hear songs like that. Thank you very much. I mean, I, I think there's an inherent loneliness that we all feel in yeah. this life. And if I succeed at one thing ever, it doesn't matter, you know, if I get rich or famous. I don't care about that. It's more of just did I make a connection with somebody? The same way that, like, when I first heard Jonathan Richmond's voice. I mean, that's, yeah. what, that's what Radio Kids is about. Mm -hmm. Putting on and hearing I'm straight and hearing, you know, this voice that sounds like, you know, Dylan when he just got up or something, you know, and you hear this amazing voice, and it changes your life. And, you know, Jonathan Richmond didn't know I was listening when I nope. was 13, but the fact that that's that shared experience that we can all have and... 
you know, that's that's the beauty of writing songs. You know, this is not like an art project. It's not me trying to pull the wool over anybody's eyes. It's like I love playing guitar. Yeah. I love singing. And I love the fact that I'm not working in like an RV factory in Indiana. <laughs> right? And like I get to be in sunny Boston instead yeah. of, you know, second shift and, you know, RV camp or whatever. So it's just... It's the best. Let's let's play off that a little bit, because because especially ra I mean, Radio Kids is uh, that that's the song right now. People, as you said, it's getting played on the radio. We're playing it on Radio BDC. Let's uh, let's let's indulge for a second here. Let's you and I go back. Let's pretend that we're kind of we're hanging out in like your bedroom or my yeah. bedroom, yours, because you probably had cooler concert posters than <laughs> I did back in the day. Although I did have the I did have the Siamese Dream uh, oh, Smashing Pumpkins single poster, and I had the Melancholy poster as yep. well, like the album art blown up, which That's is cool. That's perfect. But let's go back and let's pretend that we're listening to the radio back in like the mid to late '90s, and we've got our cassette tape in our boombox, and we've got it queued up. We got the play, record, press down, and then the pause, press down, and we're getting ready to unpause on on some songs. Let's put it like a little mixtape together. What are some songs that would have been on like your mixtape? tape like taping off the radio back in the day i would say put it specifically like i remember when spoon man first came out. yes okay and but i was so new to playing guitar you know i was probably 12 13 years uh -huh. old that my friend said it's in a different time signature and i was like what is time signature <laughs> what does mean? that even mean <laughs> so and the, by me acting cool i would hang out and say Anytime Spoon Man would come out, yeah, you know this is in a different time signature. <laughs> and, like, and I had no idea what it meant, but I felt like the cool kid. Yep. But, you know, it was that era of just, you know, it wasn't, it was larger than life. Yes. And still, but the, the, the proofs in the pudding, like, those records still sound good. Yes, they do. Let's let's press pause on that tape for a minute. What, what, what were your reactions uh, a week or so ago when you heard about the passing of Chris Cornell? Because well, I know that, like, the, yeah, those that's that's impactful music for you. It's it's the passing of someone that is intertwined with your DNA. Yeah. Never meeting a person, but yet you know what fell on Black Days did the yes. first time you heard her Fourth of July. You know, yes. Rusty Cage. Oh, God, you thank know, you. you. I know love what that song. Those, yeah. You know, I was I was the, you know, kind of lost teenager staring at a TV screen, and seeing Black Hole Sun video for the first time and thinking this is weird, and this feels like. This is helping me escape from whatever stuff I'm going through right now. Yeah. And when you see these people, because the thing is, like, there's rock stars who are larger than life. And that's what grunge did. It destroyed that. Yes. It destroyed. It did. You know, I still like some of the hair metal stuff, Van Halen. But, like, those guys felt like you could never touch them. But then you saw the 90s happen, and you saw what was missing in rock since, like, the Neil Young's world, Flaws. And flaws are beautiful. Yeah. And you saw these like absolutely real individuals come out. And, you know, to be a developing person like I was at that age, I mean, that was the that was the Rosetta Stone of just like, okay, this is the language that I speak now. And, you know, these pantheons of, you know, Chris or Kurt or, you know, it's just Eddie, you know, it just and I'll never not be that. I don't care what hot new record comes out next week. That's no. A, you know, like, you're very much your own man. Yeah, Tim. You're and very like, much... it might be a great song, but still they set standards. Yeah, and that's what I, I. I'll never get there. I don't think. But it's really cool to have bands of such capacity to set your goals towards. And they gave us. And 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 you and you brought it up. And I'll echo it as well. I, they they gave. Kids, kids who had trouble connecting. Yep. They gave you an access yep. point. It, it gave you that message of, hey, it's okay to be different. Yep. It's okay to be who you are. It's okay to not kind of be, it's kind of okay to not get the world around you. Like there's, yeah. there are they other, may not there are get other you. Yeah. It's not you getting it. Exactly, in, exactly. You know. and, and to have that to connect, because I mean, I think, I feel like a lot of young people these days, it's, they take for granted that they can, they can connect I know. immediately. We didn't have that. I know. We, you know, we had, like you said, we had, we had the Black Hole Sun uh, video on MTV. Yeah. We had Jonathan Richmond on the radio, yep. so. So. Well, I, I couldn't be happier for you, Tim. I mean, the, the new record is great, and Thank you obviously you. seem to be very happy with, with, uh, with where you are right now and, and where things are moving forward, and you're keeping, you're keeping the guitar alive. You yep. don't apologize for who you are and what you do, and I think there needs to be more of that in the world today in general. You know, let alone in rock and roll. So I'm thank you. A big you. hairy fun man is yeah. just my goal in life. So he's a big hairy fun <laughs> man. He's Tim Showalter from Strand of Oaks here backstage at Boston Calling 2017, live from the Middle Light Broadcast Center on Radio BDC. Thanks again, Tim. Peace, man. Thank you.